Welcome to the Ohio Brett Show. How are we doing, Charlita? And how are we doing? Oh, we're Matt? good. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Can you hear us? I can hear you great. You guys so look great. We are still. ready to roll. And I'm so excited to be in the locker room with both of you. Thank you so much for coming on. We're live on Brideon.com. Uh, people watching all over America and all over the world. And we are here to tackle some of the tough topics. And, you know, I do have that sports background, had played college football for Nick Saban. My dad, Dr. Al Bowl, was actually the athletic director that hired Nick and then an assistant at Ohio State, longtime athletic director at the University of Toledo, then got hired out in California out at Fresno State. So we love the Bulldogs. And then he got hired away by the Kansas Jayhawks. But in the first segment, let's just take a little time so both of you can introduce yourself to the locker room. Well, Ohio Brett, I, first I want to introduce you to this amazing man. This is Pastor Dave. And Pastor Dave, I had to seek him out because General Flynn needed a place to come to California. And he wanted to go to where there was a real pastor that led his flock fearlessly with no masks and didn't shut down and was not afraid of the governor. And I found this cowboy and exorcist. <laughs> so, and that, it's so true. And so he, he was just such a blessing because he welcomed General Flynn in and General Flynn came here in 2022 on July 16th. So uh, this is Pastor Dave and he's just been a blessing to our lives. Thank you, Charlita. Uh, and Charlita has been like an angel. Uh, she she just came in out of nowhere like angels do and appeared and just been sharing uh, all kinds of good things with the Church of Glad Tidings. She lives a little north of us, but what a blessing she's been. And we've partnered in a whole lot of things uh, mm -hmm. since uh, since we met and are still partnering uh, more than ever. And um we're really excited about it. So it's great to be here with you, uh, Brett. It's it's wonderful. Well, Pastor Dave, I've heard so many great things about you. You know, that's one of the blessings that just when I was thrown into this game, I wasn't going to back down. And, and what you would know is that my number one national program everywhere I go is just a seed planter for Jesus Christ. They're encouraging everybody to read the Bible on their own. Let's help out the pastors. We don't have to wait till a Wednesday night service or Saturday or Come Sunday on. to hear some amazing pastor light us up with scripture. We are allowed to help out our pastors and read scripture on our own because I Come love on. pastors and you need so much encouragement. You know, you got yes. your whole flock that you have to listen. They bring and lay their troubles at your feet. And I love the fact that I hope you get some encouragement, Pastor Dave, off of this time in the locker room, because it's my first time meeting you. But, you know, I met so many great doctors and they've probably all been through your church with Dr. Sherry Timpenny and Dr. Judy Mikevitz. That are yeah. just, they yeah. took such a liking and they coach up Ohio Brett. And I've been blessed to travel and do events with both of them. And Charlita, when you came on that first time, it was one of my most watched shows and I loved your That's energy awesome. and I loved your passion to serve your family first and your community. But obviously in that proper uh, authority structure that is taught in the locker room. And, and one of the things in the open mic policy here, and I have it on the screen right now, I'm asking everybody if you're watching this right now, I want you to go please visit peaceofheaven.life and churchofgladtidings.com. It'll be scrolling on this interview the whole time. I'll pull up the websites here in a little bit, but I want to dig in a little bit because I, I got two amazing leaders right here. And, and one of the things I've seen going to all 50 states, we got it done in 2022 in person, 2023 in person, small meetups. I didn't play for the Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm not anybody famous, but I'm guiding people to Jesus. And Amen. in 2024, I'm willing to go again, but there is so much frustration out there. People seem so lost because the division, it's been around since the uh, Garden of Eden, but what is your message? And Charlita, I'll let you go first. What is your core message for us families that we do um, have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? We see all these abominations. What's your advice for our families in America today? Well, you know, the most important thing to me as a wife and a mother is read your Bible. 
if you do not fill yourself with the living word of God, then you will not have the artillery and the the words that he gives us to protect us when the, the enemy comes and the battles happen. Because it says in the Bible, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's not just because we want to know God's heart. It's because we want to have his word buried inside of our heart for protection. And I want people to have hope. There is not one thing that God cannot undo. He Amen is the that. omnipotent father and Jesus is the only son of God. And he kicked Satan out of heaven, just a fallen angel, a, a little piece of crap. Sorry, <laughs> but he kicked him out of heaven. He didn't, he didn't have to drag him out. That's he just right. said, go. He That's has right. the authority and people need to remember that Jesus and <laughs> Satan are not equal. That's for sure. Jesus is the only son of God and he is the only Jesus. There are many gods, but there's one Jesus and his blood covers everything. Hallelujah. Amen, Thank amen, you so much amen. for sharing that. There are so many people in the locker room that are here today that are, we're all broken. We're all coming. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor yeah. Dave, you know this, because when people watch you on your live streams around the world or they're in person with you, they come and be thankful that they actually showed up because they could have done anything with their time, but they are there with you. And Pastor Dave, I, I've got some questions because I love meeting new pastors. And when you are preparing a pastor sermon or a series, you know, what is the first thing that you do as you prepare yourself to deliver those sermons? Well, the first thing I do, Brett, is pray uh, because I really have nothing to say uh, except to just pass on the mind of Christ. Uh, that's what I'm speaking on this weekend is the mind of Christ versus the curse of Constantine, which we're going to talk about um, all of the compromise that came through um, down through history through organized religion but to me um, if I'm not representing Christ I I need not um, open my mouth so uh, that's what I try to do is to get the mind of Christ which is available to all of us and then to uh, communicate that in a way that that helps practically helps people um, uh, live a life that pleases God and uh, honors God and is productive uh, in establishing the kingdom of God in the earth, which that's what we're all about around here is uh, God's kingdom come, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, uh, you know, the reason that we clicked uh, so well when, when uh, Charlita and I met is we believe in the same kind of uh, uh, kingdom Christianity. It's not pie in the sky by and by. It's steak on your plate while you wait. And uh, it's it's getting something done for Jesus instead of just uh, singing kumbaya behind stained glass. So uh, we, we get along uh, just uh, splendidly and are busy, busy, busy in kingdom business. Yeah. So I anyway, uh, Church of Glad Tidings, uh, one of our mottos, Brett, is to love people well and um, I think that is something that the church, uh, the organized church has kind of lost sight of. But mm -hmm. Jesus summarized all of the law of God in simply saying, uh, love God and love others. It's four words, love God and love others. And so um, that's important to us. And we focus on that a lot. And then, you know, the Bible tells us that our real love uh, looks for ways to meet urgent needs. And so that's one of our ministry mottos that has guided us for 37, almost 38 years is find a need and meet it, find a hurt and heal it. So anyway, that's a little bit about what makes us us. It's taken us into uh, every area of urgent need that you can imagine, because, you know, if you're focused on finding a need and meeting it, uh, there's a lot of needs around. Yeah. No well, doubt about it. And we know that the, our precious children, that it would be better for you to put a millstone around your neck and commit Come suicide on. jumping Amen. in the deep waters and messing with the kids. And that's one of the things that this football guy can get so excited about because you mess with the water boy, you mess with the cheerleaders, you mess with any of our fan bases. I can promise you there are a few football guys that will take action <laughs> and we will take the corresponding Come action. On. So let's talk a little bit about peace of heaven 
Children's Paradise. Okay, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, for 37 years, we've been reaching out to meet urgent needs. Of course, that's taken us into juvenile halls. There's kids there. And many of them have been abused in uh, uh, all kind of unspeakable ways. Uh, Brad, I think you know this, but uh, most of the population of America uh, is simply unaware of the extent and the depth of evil that's all around us and terrible things happening to children in homes and uh, through the system, through um, particularly California uh, Child Protective Services is the largest uh, perpetrator of um, uh, of child trafficking in America. A lot of people don't uh, recognize that. A lot of people aren't willing to recognize that because they know somebody that uh, is helping out in um, some kind of a, a state capacity. And again, I'm not saying that all, all the people in those systems are wrong. I'm just saying the system itself has fallen. And so as we've been meeting urgent needs, uh, we've just been um, impacted over and over by the the uh, extent of the need to help intervene in uh, the lives of children. Uh, again, we have compassion on everybody, but of all the people uh, on the planet that are vulnerable, it's little kids. And uh, what a travesty that they are taken advantage of. So we've helped in a lot of ways. Years ago, we did a program called uh, Babies Out of Bondage. And we went into uh, the women's prisons in California and we just told them if they're pregnant in prison, we'll meet them at the hospital when they're given birth uh, and we'll take their child and love them and uh, put them in a good Christian family and raise them uh, as our own until those ladies get out of prison. And then we'll give them their child back. And we got there because we were helping single moms and parolees. And, and we found out that the state of California um, confiscated babies yeah. And, and they, they actually did it with great enthusiasm and uh, had a robust, uh, what we call a, a, a state-certified kidnapping program. Yeah. And they would just take these children, make them wards of the state, and then those kids, uh, it was almost impossible to reunite the children yeah. with their parents. And so uh, we got started there years ago, and uh, we, we found homes for hundreds of kids, and we... We just blessed the moms by watching over their kids and giving them back to them. And so we've done things like that down through the years. I'll say this, Brett, we've never done that without opposition from the state of California. Uh, they've threatened us. They, they've told us they were going to shut us down, fine us. Uh, it's really amazing that the uh, magistrates that are supposed to protect our rights and serve us have become such opponents. But... Um, you know, that quest to try to meet urgent needs, that uh, led us into this whole area of trying to provide a Christ-honoring solution to the problem of human trafficking. And so we had an incident where I was debriefing a high-level military um, a, a Navy SEAL, and we were talking about child trafficking and, and all the kind of terrible things that happened overseas. And uh, I happened to have information that came from a young man that we had ministered to and had lived in our house years ago. Uh, and he had been trafficked out of a barge between uh, San Francisco and Oakland. And uh, as we were just leading him through just uh, the healing processes of his soul, um, you know, he just confided that uh, the atrocities that happened to him. Well, 20 years later, I'm talking to a fellow that's still involved in trying to do something about human trafficking, and the Spirit of God brought to mind the details of that young man from uh, tw over 20 years ago, and I, I asked him, do you know anything about uh, barges between San Francisco and Oakland out there in the water that are, are used to traffic children? And he said no, and we talked a little bit about it. He asked me if I was convinced that the young man was telling the truth. And of course, you know, uh, young men d don't just offer those kind of uh, morbid and gross details uh, just for the heck of it. And I said, of course, he's telling the truth. No, no one would make up those kind of things uh, to try to impress somebody. Well, um, uh, we finished talking about all the things we were talking about, but 
the next day, uh, early in the morning, he called and called again, called again. I was in appointments and I knew something was urgent. So I finally got back to him and said, hey, what's up? And he said, well, on behalf of 807 children that we rescued this morning from a barge uh, between San Francisco and Oakland, I want to thank you uh, for, for helping us save them. And, uh, you know, it was a, an amazing thing, and we celebrated that. But, Brett, what, what that led to is him saying, hey, you know, we can't keep those kids in uh, a Marine uh, military base. And so if you really want to help make a difference, find us places for these kind of kids to go. Yes. And as I mentioned to you, we've had quite a lot of experience with um, uh, satanic ritual abuse and, and uh, people that were just abused domestically and whatnot. And uh, I know it's the kind of thing that a lot of people, uh, they, they just won't commit to that level of intervention. Uh, it's just basically um, uh, too intense for a lot of people. So uh, we got to thinking, as we always do, uh, okay, what can we do about this? Somebody's got to do something about it. We're not the kind of people that just sit around and say, oh, shucks, I hope somebody does something. And so um, we knew of a women's prison five miles north of our church that had been mothballed. And we went up and uh, we, we just uh, talked him down. It was shut down at the time. Uh, our, our governor had uh, tried to, well, he did outlaw private prisons in California because they didn't want competition for federal money and uh so anyway uh they wanted to sell it for 17 million dollars we we talked them down to four million and made a deal and we're in the middle of that right now we've got a we've got about four months left to come up with four million dollars to buy that facility and then we're going to change it from a women's uh prison it, it was a minimum security prison so it's not like it has, you know, cells and bars and everything, but we're going to change it from a low security prison to a children's paradise. We're going to make it so beautiful that the people driving by on the outside will say, I wish our kids could go there. Okay. Uh, we're going to make it heaven on earth for these kids that yeah. have been raised in an environment of hell on earth. And uh, I know God's going to help us do it because it's the heart of Christ. Yes. And so, you know, I, I feel like there's some things you need to pray about and some things you, you don't. It, it, you don't have to pray about helping kids. Yes. Uh, you know how God feels about it. You know that the great commandment is do for others what you want done for you. We, we don't have to pray about these things. Uh, we just need to knuckle down, buckle down, and do it, do it, do it. And so that's what we're in the midst of doing. It's a huge uh, prospect, but huge prospects just remind me that we're partnering with God. Mm -hmm. If yeah. God be your partner, make your plans big. And so uh, we've we partnered with um, Mission Safe Harbor. It's the largest, most aggressive child rescue operation in world history. And uh, we're going to convert that former prison into a paradise of God that's beautiful, that's filled with love and grace. We're going to love those kids. We're going to give them a home. We're going to educate them. Uh, we're going to teach them all the things that a good mom and dad should have always taught them. In some cases, uh, we'll be able to get them back to their parents. But, you know, the, the ugly truth, Brett, is a lot of those kids were trafficked by their parents. Yes. So well, we're not returning anybody into a bad setting yes. and, yeah. and we're going to create heaven on earth so we're oh. excited to jump in yeah. on is one of the things that i i ran for u.s senate for the state of california and uh, i planted seeds all over that the lord asked me because it wasn't my race it was his race and one of the things that just really stood out to me were how many people that needed a parent they just needed oh, a yeah. mom to love them or i mean I can't believe how many young men turned mm -hmm. to me as, and called me mama. Mm -hmm. We're talking boys that were even 10 years younger than me. And it just broke my heart. But the reason it's so important to me is because my mother was trafficked by her own mm -hmm. father. And it is very serious. And people don't understand how broken people are. And I, I do have permission for my mom to share her story. 
And she was eight years old when her mother uh, gave her a padlock and a screwdriver and told her she knew it was happening to put it on the inside of her door and walked away. And my mm. mom never got over that hurt of her mom not even happen, helping her put that lock on her door. And mm. so as, a, as a, a daughter of a mother that was trafficked, I ended up becoming the mother of my own mother because she couldn't mm. handle reality. And God equipped me with the strength of his heart to be a good parent to her and show her that it was okay to be broken and that I loved her no matter what. And I did the cooking and the cleaning, took care of my younger brother. I had two older brothers. I'm not bitter about it at all. I just thank God because he gave me that strength. And my mother had the ability to forgive because she loved Jesus so much. And so through her ability to forgive and the strengths that God gave her, I want to reach out to all the brokenhearted. I mean, we have adult brokenhearted people that need to be hugged and put back together. And the only way we can do that was with the love of Jesus. And people always say, I don't know what I can do. I'm only one person. One dollar or five dollars can help make this project an incredible um, opportunity to heal the broken, the people that have been yeah. so abused in our in our nation and our country by people they trusted and i just i just wanted to reach out to you ohio brett because i know that you have a beautiful audience that loves the lord and we're fighters and and we don't back down it's time to stand up on, and take man. this this enemy on. on because the largest crime in america right now is not drugs it's trafficking right, right. and our own government's trying to pass a law it's called cra and if you look at Laura Logan's um, X account, you will see that they're saying, say yay to that, to, to turn it down because our government shouldn't be licensing the uh, DHS to legalize Absolutely. trafficking Absolutely. of children yeah. and making them, uh, taking them across the border. These babies need hope and they need love and they're precious. And it is what it says in the Bible. I, I got challenged by my own Christianity on the campaign trail. They said, how could you be a Christian if you want a trafficker to die? And I said, well, gosh, to me, that is, it speaks volumes about your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because my God's a righteous God. And he says in the Bible that he would rather tie a millstone around someone's neck and toss them into the depths of the ocean to see one of the innocent, innocent ones That's hurt. Right. And they are pure and innocent. And I stand on the, on the law of Jesus and his living word. And that is that he wants those babies protected. Yes. And we're asking I you to help us. I couldn't agree more. And if you're watching this interview right now on brideon.com, please share this with everybody that you know. I am so thankful for Charlita and Pastor Dave and their courageous stand to stand for the children. And my ears were working on this interview, and I know your ears were too. There's a call and a request. And with that Amen. forearm shiver of love, Ohio Brett's going to make the ask for them right now. You see their websites. They've been on this interview this whole time. And I know that number was $4 million, but they need more than that because they need operating costs. So I believe by faith that you're listening right now and you will contact them through the websites on the screen below. At take it to prayer and you can give at your easy amount, whether that's $10, $20, $50, $100, $500, $1,000, 000, $1 million or more. You're watching this right now. You have been blessed with those beautiful, beautiful resources all the money in the in this great firmament is God's. It's His. So oh, we're making man. that ask right now. If you feel led, quit giving to the the cancer groups. Quit giving to save the cactus, save the whales, save the coyotes. Quit giving to those that I actually want to encourage everybody to quit giving to politicians on either side. Let's defund the politicians on both sides. Yeah. Because in this day and age, Come on, don't tell me that you can't run for office on video calls, on Zoom calls, or Amen. heaven forbid, you have to go door to door in your own territory yeah. and introduce yourself. So the call to action right now, him. before we close, <laughs> we've got another great guest coming in from Texas next. But before we close this segment, I'm making the ask right now. Take it to prayer first. 
and go give. I can't wait to get the praise report that you've exceeded your goal before October when Ohio <laughs> Brett is scheduled to come back to California. Thank I will God. come find you. I will look forward to breaking bread with you and encouraging both of you. <laughs> in person. Pastor Dave and Charlita, thank you so much for coming on the Ohio Brett Show. And I am so encouraged by both of your example for all of us to follow. Thank, Thank you, you. Brad. You're a blessing. And to your audience, God bless you. And God's bigger than all of this. Come on. Come Bring see us on, in Yuba City, Brad. I will. I'm going to come find you, Pastor Dave. You know okay. it, Charlita. Can't wait to come see you. God bless okay. you. And thanks for coming in you the too. locker room with Ohio Brad.